Hey, everybody, this is Matt Mayoko from NBC Sports Bay Area bringing you an update. Was just in the 49ers locker room. Kyle Shanahan just spoke to the media. We'll bring you all those updates, including an updated injury report. But first, this is brought to you by Kenyon Club Brewery. It's a restaurant, brewery, beer garden, all in one in a family friendly atmosphere in Moraga, California. That's one of my go to spots. I'm sure if you go there, there's a very good chance you'll see me because I hang out there quite often, seeing that it's pretty close to where I live. And and also, Canyon Club is coming soon to the livery in Danville. So that's right off 680. It's a great location. Can't wait for that uh, to be built out. And uh, that'll definitely be a stop that I make along my way on my commute home from Santa Clara, where the 49ers headquarters are located, where they practice, to my home. So, okay, here's the rundown on the 49ers injury report. Four players, I'm sorry, three players were ruled out for this game. No Jawan Jennings, no Kevin Givens, and then, of course, no Jake Moody. So Kevin Givens has the core muscle injury. Jawan Jennings has the hip injury that he sustained in that Thursday night game against Seattle. And so that's where the injury report is. Those three guys definitely out, of course. With Moody being out, it means another game of Anders Carlson up from the practice squad to kick on Sunday night against the Dallas Cowboys. 49ers do list four players as questionable. Debo Samuel with the wrist slash illness. Also another illness, Diamador Lenore um, was listed as questionable for this game with an illness. Don't know the exact details on that illness. Also George Kittle and George Odom uh, listed as questionable. I think Debo Samuel will play in this game. Uh, spoke to him after practice today, and he talked about just kind of it was scary for him not to be able to breathe, really catch his breath. Of course, he was diagnosed with a fluid in his lungs following the game on Sunday, was only able to play four snaps in that game, and then he was hospitalized. So he said he has a phobia of hospitals. Who doesn't? But he said it, it was just not a real cool situation for him uh, to be out there, uh, be admitted to the hospital, and then uh, spent two nights in the hospital. And then the um, was returning to practice uh, Wednesday, uh, did not practice Thursday. He did practice. And then today he practiced as well, just limited practice. So it's signs are that he will play in the game on Sunday. But when asked about his confidence level, he basically said, we shall see. I think he'll play because where the 49ers are with their 53-man roster, I think they can definitely account for him to be up in this game along with um, – Right now, I guess the starters would be Debo Samuel and Ricky Pearsall with also Chris Conley, Ronnie Bell, and Jacob Cowing out there. Well, speaking of Jacob, Jacob Cowing and some of the, the young guys, um, I did have a conversation, a 10-minute conversation with Chris Collinsworth, uh, lead analyst for NBC Sports, uh, Sunday Night Football on NBC Uh before the 49ers play Sunday night games, he always comes out early and we spend a few minutes together. And so that interview, you'll find that um, at NBC Sports, uh, There will be a podcast that drops tomorrow with that as well. But it was interesting that he mentioned so many of the new names on the 49ers. You know, I asked him about some of the things that stood out to him and he mentioned Renardo Green. He mentioned Malik Mustafa. He mentioned Jacob Cowing. So I, I can't remember a time in recent 49ers history where so many young guys are being asked to make an impact. And we'll add Ricky Pearsall to that list as well. In fact, if you check out my YouTube channel, I dropped about a five minute interview with uh, Ricky Pearsall for, at his locker. It was a group interview where he talked about, you know, now with the injuries to Brandon Ayuk, Juwan Jennings. And then, you know, at this point, uh, Debo Samuel, a little bit questionable, how it's afforded the opportunity for the young guys to make an impact. And now it's incumbent upon those young guys to step up and make plays, himself included. Okay, on Friday morning, John Lynch was on KNBR, and um, he talked about, you know, the, the injury to Brandon Ayuk, what it does to the receiver's room. And he did say that he feels fortunate that the 49ers do have some fairly, he said they're fairly deep 
at that position. So he kind of downplayed the notion that the 49ers could be in the market for a trade to add a wide receiver. He said because they do feel good about the depth there, there's not an urgency to pull off a trade. Obviously, if the 49ers were in the trade market, they wouldn't want the rest of the league to think that they're desperate to make a trade. So, uh, you know, nothing too big there other than I think that there is something to be said for, you know, they do have three wide receivers that they feel good about for sure. Guys who are starting caliber players, John Jennings showed that he's a starting caliber wide receiver with the two starts he had earlier this season, very prolific games, obviously Debo Samuel. And then the 49ers did take Ricky Pearsall in the first round of that draft of the 2024 draft. So that tells you right there what they think of him and his potential. Um, it, on the subject of the 49ers getting players in a trade, what Lynch said was he pointed to some of the players who the team expect to have back this season as kind of similar notion of adding a player in a trade. Well, they might not add a player in a trade, but they do expect to get Christian McCaffrey back at some point after the buy, Dre Greenlaw. Uh, Yitor Gross Matos, Talano Hufanga, and John Feliciano. So uh, there was a report, uh, Michael Silver had a report that the Foreigners weren't ex exactly expecting Hufanga back this season, to which his agent responded to Mike and said, no, he's, he's going to be back or he should be back. I did ask Kyle Shanahan about Talano Hufanga on uh, Friday, and this is a few hours after John Lynch went on KBR and basically said all those guys, they absolutely expect them back. I would say that Kyle Shanahan was a little bit more reserved um, as far as expecting Hufan get back. He says they hope to have him back. They want him back. Um, but he did, he stopped far short of saying that, oh, it's a guarantee that Hufanga will be back. Now, that is kind of par for the course with Shanahan because I think as a head coach in the past, what I've seen from him is that if a player is going to be out for an extended period of time, like Hufanga is after the wrist surgery to repair the torn ligaments, Shanahan will also kind of get into that mindset of the player's not here. And so the team has to adapt and play football without him. So therefore he doesn't like just in his mind think, oh, he's going to be back at some point. We can count on his return. So my thought is that Hufanga is back at some point in the season, but I also don't think that it's a sure thing either. Um, on the subject of John Feliciano, who started last year at right guard later in the season, taking Spencer Burford's spot, 49ers do expect him back as he's making progress from a knee injury. And by the way, all those guys that I talked about, no setbacks as far as I can tell with their returns. So they are expected back at some point. But the, the question was asked on KBR about could Feliciano take over for Jake Brindle at center later in the season when he's cleared to be back. And what John Lynch said that is that Jake Brindle is our center and he's a good player. And last year, I think Brindle did have a, a good season. He was a alternate in the pro bowl. I, I just don't know that at this point in the season, and this goes for the trade market too. I really don't think teams often add starting caliber offensive linemen just because it is so difficult to move from one system to another when it comes to the offensive line, especially with the 49ers, you know, as far as a trade goes, it's really difficult to acclimate somebody coming in new, learning all the things you have to learn in the system, and then stepping onto the field and being an upgrade over the player that was there before. With Feliciano, he has not played center with the 49ers. Like I mentioned last year, he was a guard. So I just don't think for the most part, they could surprise me. There could be a trade, probably not for a starting caliber player, but I do think that uh, it's, I, I wouldn't expect the Fredanners to add a player at the trade deadline that can step up, be a starter and really help them. Going back to Hafanga, I think the 49ers right now, where they are with their safety position, it all it kind of seems to me that they have three very similar players in Jair Brown, Malik Mustafa, and Talano Hofanga. So what Hofanga is, when he's not here, what it does do is it kind of strips away at the depth a little bit. 
But I don't think at this stage of their careers, especially with Hofanga missing a lot of last season and all a training camp, I don't know that he like steps in and just provides an immediate upgrade. I, I really do think that all those players right now are kind of at the same level. But if you look to the future, when you have Hufanga coming off of an injury, when you have Dre Greenlaw coming off of an injury, those two guys are scheduled for unrestricted free agency after this season. I think there's a decent chance now that they end up signing one-year contracts with, with whichever team they end up signing with. And I would say that because of their injuries, it kind of put, puts the 49ers in play for – uh, them returning to the team in 2025. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. It would mean a lot to me. Also, turn on your notifications when it comes to this YouTube channel. Please like, please comment. And uh, I, I appreciate all your support that you've given me on this YouTube channel. And that's it for now.